So the FX505 DT and DY are actually a really great laptop here in the Philippines dahil sa kanyang presyo but there are many variants. So pag-uusapan natin nitong laptop which is the FX505 series. Kung is it a great buy or something that you need to leave behind. So with that being said, this is the full review and the FX505 series. So it is under the tough lineup which is the baby ROG ng laptop ng Asus. What you can see here on the box, it is really quite simplistic. When it comes to the first compartment, we have the tough backpack. And on the second compartment with another box is actually the unit documentation charger and that is it moving on to the next part is the unit itself with the gold steel look to it you have the red matter and other variants for the color scheme the gold steel has a more silver look to it that is really quite astonishing for the two-tone look especially the asus logo that is illuminated in gold it is really good with a mirror finish that resembles the asus rog pero may kita nyo guys pagdating sa kanyang build quality it is military 810g standard even though it is really great build quality for this laptop it kind of falls short when it comes to its flex na medyo flexy ang kanyang lid pero may kita nyo may konting tension pagdating sa hinge design na may kita nyo ang base chassis ng laptop may konting angat pa binubuksan ng unit pero it's really a great laptop despite its form factor that kinda looks like the ASUS ROG when it comes to its team profile pero pakita natin ang ports yes it's limited where the fall short comes in Walang USB Type-C, walang SD card reader, nor even an additional USB port and limited lang sa tatlo. And all the ports are on the left side, not on the right side. Kaya pag-uusapan natin yan later on on the maintenance part. So, you have three sets of USB ports with HDMI, Ethernet port, and of course, DC power in with combo audio jack. On the right side, you have the security lock slot, and on the bottom, we have the ventilation with the two sets of speakers na downward facing. Kung gusto niyo makita ang kanyang likod, that is the ventilation for the exhaust, and that is it for the port selection. Tako tayo dun sa kanyang display. It is not the perfect display for an IPS screen in this kind of price point but it's quite reasonable. Of course, you can actually use this laptop pagdating sa kanyang Armory Crate software na pwede nyong i-customize ang display color. You can use a professional tool to actually maintain the color that you want when it comes to making content. Lalo na pagdating sa AutoCAD, it is really quite important for some people kung gumagawa sila ng real world environment. It's not really the brightest but it has anti-glare coating na pwede nyo gamitin ng laptop outdoors with the 720p megapixel webcam which is still good when it comes to Skype calls, conference calls, and online classes with teaching na include natin dyan. The microphone quality is not going to be the perfect part of it kung ginagamit yung laptop keyboard and the fan noise that goes way high it can interfere the microphone noise when it comes to doing some professional calls. So better use a headset with a built-in microphone to have a crisper sound experience. So this is a sample video footage on the 720p webcam from this Asus Tough Gaming FX505 DY. So mapapansin nyo, medyo okay naman ang kanyang quality and the sound quality is really good. So what is up guys, gamer, this is NPT1. You know so moving on to the keyboard area, you can see it really resembles the similarity on the Asus ROG Strix GL503. And you can tell from its Armory Crate software, pwede nyo i-customize some behavior and color zones. Hindi siya individually lit for different keys na pwede nyo customize But the WASD keys has a more transparent look na medyo bumabalik tayo sa Game Boy na may transparent case. 90 skid to be exact. Pero may kita natin ang kanyang performance is 1.8mm in travel. For an average typist, it is really good to use. Without some issues, medyo sabi na natin, noisy talaga ang keyboard niya, but it's not really that mushy. And of course, if you use this keyboard layout, it is still familiar as what it seems. Spacious and more simplistic. Pero pagdating sa kanyang ergonomics, it's not really that good. So it's better for you to use an elevation stand or any kind of cooling pad na may elevation kickstand will actually help you to use the laptop to be more comfortable without any kind of fatigue sa ating mga palm. So moving to the touchpad, 
Of course, touchpad responsive as it is without any kind of compromise sa kanyang performance. Pero kung gusto niyong gamitin ang mouse, it's really good to use kung meron kayong mga dual display or if you're already getting used to a traditional external mouse, that is actually quite okay. But performance, gesture controls, and all other necessary features, responsive naman na touchpad. And the design still continues on the laptop itself with the top badge on the lower right corner with the ventilation on the top so that is what to be expected with that ROG loop power button on it. Okay so dako tayo sa specification. I forgot to mention of course the 120 hz panel which is really good and more importantly it is smooth as butter sa video na to since it is locked at 60 fps. Let's go to the specs on the cheaper variant which is the 35995 RX 560X 4GB of RAM Ryzen 5 3550H with a 1TB hard drive and 48W battery. So pag-uusapan natin ang battery later on. We have upgraded this one to an NVMe Samsung 970 EVO Plus with 16GB of RAM and you can see from its price point, medyo mahal ng konti pero it's really good to have upgrade your units if you want to keep up with your task, especially when we go to the DT. So the DT and other variants on the FX505 series may different kinds of panel, different CPUs, and similar GPU. So of course you have the GTX 1650, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, pero pinofocus natin yung 3rd gen Ryzen 5 3550H with 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD paired with a 1 terabyte hard drive, 48 watt hour battery din. And we just added another 8 gigabyte stick. Is it good in terms of performance compared to upgrades? When it comes to the performance, the Ryzen 5 3550H is a really compelling CPU even in 2021. Pwede nyo gamitin to pagdating sa professional work like AutoCAD, Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, or any other types of creative software na ginagamit nyo when it comes to content creation works and all the other professional work na ginagawa nyo. With the 16 and 20 gigs of RAM, it kinda is a mixed bag for this kind of laptop. Kasi sa configuration na ginamit namin, it is not favorable for AMD. Pagdating sa mixed capacity memory and speed memory, you can tell that Ryzen system is really known for its issues pagdating sa mixed memory na hindi magiging stable ang performance that will go to a performance penalty. Nirecommend ko guys sa inyo ang similar memory capacity pati na rin yung memory speed to maintain its performance without any kind of bottlenecks sa memory natin. The GTX 1650 is still the best card if you are going to aim for productivity lalo na pagdating sa games. The RX 560X can be helpful pero not so much by modern standards pero may kita nyo ang kanyang performance is really quite nice. You can see from the benchmark right here or you can check out both of these video gaming benchmark on the top right corner. So, leave a like, share to your friends and tap on the notification bell and get subscribed. Pero now let's proceed to the stops na pag-uusapan natin. So pagdating sa thermals, it is really quite okay for this laptop to have its fan boost configuration. On silent mode, wala siyang any kind of fan noise. Pero if you use this laptop on an office work na medyo namumuntay task kayo, the fan will start to kick in but not too eerie as it is. Pero pagdating sa gaming performance or balance mode, yes, you can use the fan boost option to increase the fan boost. And if you want to go to a balance state na pwede mag auto, it's really good. But the auto configuration can easily hear the fan noise as you use the unit, especially kung na multitask na kayo. Which is fine, pero nagkaroon tayo ng thermal throttle sa processor. Pero pag-uusapan natin ang kanyang upgrades kasi doon natin malalaman kung bakit nagtatrottle ang ating CPU and GPU. In removing the bottom panel, it's really quite easy. Just remove all the screws and be careful kung napapry tayo ng unit sa bottom cover. Kailangan natin ingatan ang plastic tabs to secure the laptop's base cover para hindi siya medyo nakatiwangwang lang sa labas na nakanga. So, using proper hand tools and tools for your laptop. So now let's explain kung bakit medyo missing ang mga stops na pinag-usapan natin earlier. Kaya no SD card reader and even Type-C is because ang kanyang motherboard layout is kinda different. 
Yes, you can see from the battery, medyo maliit lamang ang 48 watt hour na may maraming waste of space. Pero I do wish to have another cooling system on the right side of the laptop. There is that tape right here na may kita nyo na dapat meron siyang another heat pipe to cool the laptop's GPU plus the SSD, NVMe lang ang kanyang support for the M.2 format, HDD to a different capacity or even an SSD, and it can be upgradable to 32 gigs. Pero nakita nyo ang kanyang heat pipe is that you only have two heat pipes on the GPU and one for the CPU that shares the GPU heat pipe as well. So medyo doon tayo ng karoon ng issue pagdating sa thermal throttle that I do wish that Asus would improve the thermals on this. At least a tough Dash F15 is really quite good when it comes to performance. So the speakers are not really that good but it's still perfect for a basic listening experience or even some watching videos casually. So for a casual basis, it is a really great speaker pero kung bass ang hinahanap nyo, it really lacks bass for this kind of laptop. So here is a sample video. So pag-uusapan natin ang battery life and it really falls short for the 48 watt hour. It really is lackluster when it comes to its battery runtime. Now it can go at almost 5.5 hours, 5.5 hours. Pero nakita nyo sa benchmark, it kinda changed the story. Yes, the 48 watt hour is really okay. But if you have a powerful CPU and a powerful GPU, even it is kinda entry level for a graphics card with a GDDR5 graphics in the mid-gear section, it's not really going to give you the best potential in battery runtime. Na kailangan nyo i-disable ang NVIDIA graphics card since it uses an Optimus technology, gagamitin niya ang integrated graphics similar also to AMD's pero it kind of still falls short when it comes to normal load and full load especially when you're going to do some games. At least on other units like the Tough Dash F15, it improves a better battery life thanks to its higher watt capacity because higher watts will give you better battery life. So in the end, what are the things that you need to take note for for a laptop in this kind of price point? Yes, the Tough FX505 series is not really the perfect laptop pero pagdating sa kanyang budget, it is really friendly for its specification at this price point that it delivers really great performance, really great slickness and of course, it is still lightweight for this kind of laptop when it comes to its weight pero you have a lot of convenience for this laptop for the budget meal. Sabihin na natin, it's like a Nissan Cup noodles for this kind of laptop but with some compromises. Of course, wala tayong SD card reader, wala rin tayong USB Type-C. The display is really good but I wish the IPS could be better when it comes to a higher nit brightness or even a better color accuracy. Pero ang battery life is something that really falls short and last but not least is the thermals which the thermal should be better but it's understandable that there are some cuts here and there. However, for the price under 40,000 pesos or 50,000 pesos, you can get the 120Hz panel kung gusto niyo maglaro ng games and just adjust the settings. Or if you want to use the 144Hz panel, it is way better. Pero hindi niyo naman may utilize ang performance ng 144 and 120Hz sa gaming kung hindi niyo ina-adjust ang settings a bit lower. Kasi of course, your graphics cards really vary depending on the performance on your laptop na ma-achieve ang ganyan na frame rate. What do you think on the Asus Tough FX505? Is it a good buy or something that you can leave behind? For me, I could say it is a good buy despite the price point, despite the convenience of its potential for a really great laptop with a slimmer form factor with a more budget friendly spectrum na pwede nyong gamitin ang laptop na to and you can upgrade later when it comes to components like your memory, hard drive, SSD that will benefit you in the long run. And I could say, minimizing the compromise, but adding all the positives, the Asus Tough FX505 is the best budget laptop in 2021. Let me know sa comment section below. 
leave a like, share to your friends, thumb, and tap on the notification bell. And this is Norms and I'll catch you guys in the next video.